Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba <laughs> Welcome to class. I'm Professor Michael, and today we'll be talking about analyzing video game music. First off, I know of several other YouTubers who make videos like this and refer to themselves as professor for the video. This is not me copying them. I actually did teach music at the college level for six years. I just miss it, and I wanted to make the video like this too. Also, I wanted an excuse to dress in my professor drag. I also don't want to say that the other YouTubers shouldn't call themselves professor. They should, and those videos that I've seen are almost Almost always great. There are plenty of excellent YouTube channels that analyze and discuss music, some that I've even had my students watch in the past. There are also some really excellent YouTube channels that analyze and discuss video game music specifically. When you're analyzing music that is meant for another medium, like a video game, a ballet, an opera, a movie, etc., just looking at the music by itself isn't really getting the whole story. You also have to connect it to that video game or ballet or opera or movie to really get what the music is doing in that moment. This is something that I think 8-Bit Theory does really well. You should definitely check out that channel if you're not already aware. There's a link in the description. 8-Bit's videos do a great job of connecting the music you hear to what you're seeing on the screen. But I want to explore a way to hopefully take that a step further and codify a way to compare a dramatic analysis and a musical analysis. Music theorist Edward Latham in his 2000 dissertation and subsequent book Tonality as Drama, Closure and Interruption in 420th Century American Operas puts forth a method of merging musical analysis with a dramatic analysis of text inspired by Konstantin Stanislavski. More on Stanislavski in a minute. I found this methodology really fascinating, and I adapted this to better suit my own personal analysis style while I was studying for my doctorate. This then became a lecture I gave in one of the more advanced classes I taught. The last time I gave this lecture was while I was remotely teaching at the beginning of the pandemic, so I have a video of that lecture. There's a link to that video in the description as well if anyone's interested in a deeper dive into opera analysis. I will clip a portion of that video, though, about Stanislavski. Here it is. Konstantin Stanislavski was a Russian actor and theater director. He developed a method of acting that draws on important information found in the text of the play. The Stanislavskian process of scoring a role also highlights important dramatic turning points in the text. So we need to set up some terms here for our Stanislavskian scoring. The score is an outline of the character's objectives, each corresponding to a specific unit of the text. The objective is the goal of a character for a given unit of the drama. The super objective is the overarching goal of the character for the play, or in this case, opera. The main objective is the objective for the scene or a subsection of the scene. The beat objective is the objective for a large section of a scene, for example, for one conversation. An interrupted objective is an objective that gets replaced by another one before completion, often resumed later. A hidden objective is one that's not explicit in text, but is inferred. And a line objective is a line of text that supports an MO, a main objective, or a BO, a beat objective. Latham devised a method of connecting characters' super objectives, and whether or not those objectives are met, to a musical analysis. My goal is to see if I can find a way to connect the analysis of the drama of a video game to its music. I thought that there would be no better game to attempt to connect an analysis like this than Final Fantasy VI. My plan, in the next video on Final Fantasy VI, I'll look at various character themes with Molly. Molly is not a gamer, and she doesn't really know Final Fantasy VI, but she does know music. I want to see how much of each character's personality can be gleaned by just someone listening to their themes. Then I will play through the game, taking special note of the actions, dialogue, and the music. By the end of my playthrough, I'm hoping to have a full score for the game, with super objectives for each character, main objectives, beat objectives, inferred objectives, and hidden objectives for each character in a scene, and line objectives to support all of those objectives where possible. Then, I'll see what happens when you connect a quick music analysis to that. I haven't yet decided if my playthrough reviews will just live on our Facebook page, like they have for previous games we've reviewed, 
or if I'll make YouTube videos for a playthrough review of chunks of the game. Either way, this will culminate in a full review of Final Fantasy VI at the end of this process. I hope you all enjoy this experiment with me, and I hope you join in with my analysis. Maintain your groovy selves.